And you have to have catch and release in Mexico. You know catch and release? We have catch and release in the United States. I said, we're going to change two words. We're going to change from United States. We're going to deduct one from United States. I'm actually right. Two words, because you have to be careful, because they get you in this. But two words, you're going to bring it down to one. It's going to be Mexico's replacing United States, right? What on earth are you talking about? Look at what's happening with our airports, and the, it's a disaster. And boot edge edge, you know boot edge edge? You know, years ago I said, how do you pronounce that damn name? And they said, boot edge edge, the word edge edge. That's the way it's pronounced, boot edge edge. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> The man needs a straitjacket. I'm sorry, he does. Somebody needs to replace one of his suits with a straitjacket. What in the hell was that? I'm Boston Brian from the Midas Touch Network, and I think it's very apparent, and I don't think we have to speculate as to why only 51% of the 15% of Iowa Republican voters that actually showed up to the Iowa caucus place their vote for Donald Trump. And I know it shouldn't, but it still shocks me that he even got that much. I mean, when you even look at the, the speech he gave in Iowa after the caucuses, in the bizarre way, he thanked Melania's dead mother and then went on to say how lonely her father was. I mean, it's just not normal stuff. He's looking at the rafters of a Motel 6 auditorium, talking to Melania's dead mother. The whole thing is just bizarre. Here, check this out. But more important than Melania, I want to thank her incredible beautiful mother who passed away a few days ago and she's up there way up there she's looking down and she's so proud of us and i just want to say to amalia you are special one of the most special people i've ever known and uh, that was a tough period of time for the family but she uh, she's amazing she was amazing so i just want to thank what she's done for our family and her husband who's home right now and very lonely He's a lonely man. I've never in my life seen somebody be so awkward and struggle so much with human emotion. I mean, most people just send their love or send their condolences. To me, thanking somebody that just died days previous, especially at being your wife's mother, while looking at the rafters or whatever Motel 6 auditorium you happen to be in right then, is incredibly bizarre. And then to go on and say her father is a lonely man is just disgusting, in my opinion. But for me, listening to that, the most telling part is when he says it was a tough period of time for the family and not a tough period of time for us as a family, because as I said before, the man is incapable of showing or feeling human emotion. The next victim of Donald Trump's con America tour is New Hampshire, commonly referred to as the Florida of New England for obvious reasons, with their January 23rd primary, and the rambling, cowardly con man continue to sound like the grandfather that needs to be put away at the home. If anybody can follow this next clip and knows what he's talking about, please leave it in the comments. Because I have absolutely no friggin' idea. But we're also going to place strong protections to stop banks and regulators from trying to debank you from your, you know, your, your political beliefs, what they do. They want to debank you, and we're going to debank. Think of this. They want to take away your rights. They want to take away your country. The things you're doing, all electric cars, give me a break. If you want an electric car, good. But they don't go far. They're very expensive. They're going to be made in China. That's why I think I'm going to get the auto workers to vote. For Trump, uh, you know, we're having great, great talks. Here's Mr. 5150 again in New Hampshire, living in his own little fantasy land. And I hope you're sitting down for this one because this is honestly the third take I've tried to do with this with a straight face. Donald Trump, out of his own lips, tries to take credit for the record highs in the stock market under Joe Biden. Not only does he take credit for that, but he also says that the crash in the stock market in China is due to his win in the Iowa caucus. Just... Check it out. The next Trump economic boom will begin on November 5th, 2024. That will be an economic boom. And you know, the only thing that they have now is a stock market that's going up. And it's only going up because people think we're going to win the election. I don't know if you saw yesterday. I felt very badly for them. China had a crash yesterday in their stock market. You know why? Because I won Iowa. So when people... <laughs> It's true. They cr it crashed. It was at this moment that I realized, and I know you're going to say probably a little late, that the suckers that go to Donald Trump's rallies and the people that follow Donald Trump want to be lied to because a baby three days out of the womb wouldn't believe that bullshit. It's clear that these people don't go to hear Donald Trump speak about actual policies that may benefit them and their families' lives in a positive way. They don't go there to question what his health care plan might look like because he's been talking about it coming out for the last seven years. They don't go there to question why the tax breaks for the rich were permanent, but the tax breaks for the middle class are set to expire in 2025. No, they go there to have... 
Donald Trump lied directly to their faces. They go there to hear some ridiculous form of a, uh, a political comedy skit. They go there to hear Donald Trump say mean things about the Democrats and anybody that opposes his fascistic authoritarian point of view. And listen, I know if you're new here, you're probably thinking there's just no way he can be that unintelligible and inarticulate at every speech he gives. And I'm sorry to bring you the bad news, but our lie detector determined that was a lie. He just doesn't get any better. With every speech he gives, it's just incoherent, it's illogical, it's uncoordinated, jumbled, disjointed, whatever you want to call it. He's all over the place. Here he is with just the most illogical rant about corn and liquid gold and gas and oil. Check it out. And, you know, we have more liquid gold and wealth under our feet than any other nation. We have more liquid gold, oil and gas, more liquid gold. Well, I just met non-liquid gold. You know where it was? Iowa. It's called corn. I love corn. Mmm, corn. They have, it's non-liquid. That's my day. You have more non-liquid gold. They said, what is that? I said, corn. They said, we love that idea. You know, that's a pretty cool thought, isn't it? That's a nickname in its own way, but we came up with a new word for a new couple of words for corn. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> what the hell is he talking about? It was at this point in the speech that Donald Trump found it necessary to reassure his followers of his mental stability. And nothing says how mentally stable you are like bragging about the dementia test you passed several years ago. <laughs> Here he is continuing to brag and talk about and bring up for some reason that dementia test. I actually feel better now than I did 30 years ago. Tell me, is that crazy? I feel better now. And I think cognitively I'm better than I was 20 years ago. And they say that uh, me, cognitively, I mean, I'm up here making a speech with no notes. I got these teleprompters. I haven't started practically reading them yet. You know, Doc Ronnie, right? Ronnie, do you know Ronnie? Ronnie Jackson? I said, should I take a cognitive test? Because for a while, and they were saying, this guy is so brilliant, he wants to take over the world. Then they said, this is one of the dumbest human beings ever. So what's the story? He said, well, the problem is, you know, people will find out. And uh, if you do badly, it's not a particularly good thing. I said, well, is that a hard test? It can be hard. I said, look, I got to take it because I got to shut it up. And I took it and I aced it. I think it was 35, 30 questions. And let me tell you, you know, they always show you the first one, like a giraffe, a tiger, or this, or that, a whale. Which one is the whale? Okay, and that goes on for three or four, and then it gets harder and harder and harder, and then it's multiplied 3,293 times four, divide by three. They have plenty of tough stuff. Well, since you can bet your life on the fact that Donald Trump's never heard the answer to that math question, it's 4,390.6. And... This would all be extremely easy to laugh at and really funny if Donald Trump wasn't the presumptive winner to become the nominee for president of the United States again for the Republican Party in 2024. I mean, the man is just an absolute threat to democracy. And if you don't take my word for it, let's see what they're saying about Donald Trump in England. Because what he represents is, I believe today, a, a, a threat to the, to, the, to the safety of the world, a, a threat to American democracy upon which, whether you like it or not, huge amounts of stability and peace in the West depend. And for all you trolls that are hate watching, I know you're probably saying to yourself, come on, Brian, that's just one liberal, level-headed, clear-minded, respected, well-established radio host in England. Okay, I got you. How about the former head of MI6, which is the military intelligence section and espionage agency for the British government? Um, have Donald Trump said that um, Joe Biden, who is president, was a threat to democracy. Well, the former head of MI6, Richard Dearlove, has just suggested that re-electing Donald Trump would be a threat to our national security. When you have incredibly intelligent people like that, when you have the former head of MI6, when you have myself and every other political commentator in the United States trying to tell you that Donald Trump is a threat to democracy, hyperbole has gone out the window. I mean, this man is an existential threat to our existence in this country. And not only in this country, but the way that the United States affects every other country on earth. I mean, even within the last few hours, this was posted at 6.08 p.m. by Donald Trump, just an absolutely unhinged rant on True Social. He posts, a president of the United States must have full immunity, without which it would be impossible for him, her, to properly function. Any mistake, even if well intended, would be met with almost certain indictment by the opposing party at term end. Even events that, quote unquote, cross the line must fall under total immunity, or it will be years of trauma trying to determine good from bad. 
there must be certainty. Example, you can't stop police from doing the job of strong and effective crime prevention because you want to guard against the occasional quote-unquote rogue cop or quote-unquote bad apple. Sometimes you just have to live with the quote, great but slightly imperfect, end quote. All presidents must have complete and total presidential immunity or the authority and decisiveness of the President of the United States will be stripped and gone forever. Hopefully this will be an easy decision. God bless the Supreme Court. Just Donald Trump's latest and most obvious attempt to not only lure and bait the Supreme Court into doing what they want because he put them there and he's not going to let them forget that, but to convince everybody that the role of the president is to have absolute immunity no matter what his decision is, no matter what crime he commits, regardless of who is in power, they have the authority to do anything they want, which just absolutely ends democracy, the rule of law, and everything else this country stands for for all time. If for some reason at this point you haven't been taking this seriously, and because you're watching the Midas Touch Network at this point, I can tell you are, you, we really need to try to get everybody to get involved. We need to get people involved and let them know what the hell is going on. Make them aware exactly what Donald Trump is trying to do. Exactly what it would mean if Donald Trump and the Republican Party get back into power. So please, everybody, continue to do your part. Continue to call this shit out any way you can, any way you see it, no matter where it is. Continue to get people involved. Continue to get your family involved, your friends involved. It's very important. Continue to stay right here at the Midas Touch Network. If you want to help us even further, you can reach us at patreon.com slash Midas Touch. And if you'd like to help independent creators like myself that have absolutely nobody above them, telling them what they can and cannot say, you can help me at patreon.com slash Boston Brian. I would absolutely appreciate it. Several levels there that you could check out. Just want to let you guys know that I appreciate each and every one of you. If you like what you're seeing, if you agree with what you're listening to, please hit that like button. Please subscribe. It's all free. We're on our way to 2 million subscribers. We're we're incredibly close to that milestone, so please help us out. Until next time, keep up the fight, never back down. I'm Boston Brian. Have a great night. Thanks so much for watching. We're only a few subscribers short of 2 million subs. Please subscribe right now to the Midas Touch YouTube channel for free and help us grow this unapologetically pro-democracy network.